it's just a set of all positions z whose equation values are positive, LT uh, being defined by this formula in the case where uh, we uh, suppose that the first uh, position of, of uh, portfolio processes uh, correspond to the cash account. That is, LT uh, of Z appears to be the maximum, uh, maximal amount of cash you can get from your position alpha at time T. Indeed, uh, this position Z minus uh, uh, alpha E1 uh, belongs to GT, means that you can transform Z into like that, that is alpha E1. This is a portfolio position with only cash, okay? Plus this uh, uh, remaining uh, uh, part, Z minus alpha E1, which is solvent that you can throw away if you want this uh, uh, portfolio position, and then you get this, okay? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here there is a hidden uh, theorem. Yes. So if uh, there is uh, an assumption that uh, KT is proper, then uh, we can describe the solvency by verification. Uh, okay. Actually, indeed, we, we work uh, under uh, this uh, technical uh, condition, which is whether uh, natural, uh, in particular, condition 2 is natural because if you can split uh, for your position into two parts, which are uh, solvent, of course, it's natural to say that it's solvent because you, you, you may uh, separately uh, uh, liquidate these two positions. This one is, is more questionable, even if it's, uh, it holds in the, in the main models we want to consider, in particular where, where there were fixed costs. This means that, uh, in, 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 for instance, if you consider a model with fixed cost, then uh, uh, they are independent of the number of risky assets you have. So, uh, in general, it's better to liquidate your position with higher number of risky assets. The cost is the same. So this is uh, the, the idea of this third condition. This one is also natural uh, because this means that uh, 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 portfolio position uh, which only consists of positive uh, 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 number of assets is a solvent. At last, the uh, last one is, uh, is technical. Uh, this is the generalization of the so-called efficient friction for the Garanoff model. That is, uh, in that there, there are at least uh, one two positive uh, uh, transaction cost coefficient. I'm sorry, so, so, before, yeah. not the issues. Ah, ah, no. Plus, GT, what does it mean? Uh, sorry, GT. Uh, which, uh, no, 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 R was all uh, multi. Ah, so we, sorry. This is, uh, this is uh, a multidimensional uh, space uh, of uh, vectors. Uh, this is a of all x equals x1, xt, where xi belongs to R, and the plus means that all the components are positive. Ah. And, uh, can you provide some uh, picture? Yes, 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 yes. Sure. So, uh, after this proposition, actually, we can show uh, that under these conditions, then the liquidation uh, value process associated to GT, that is defining by this formula, uh, uh, satisfies some nice properties. So, so these ones are always uh, natural because they, they just uh, have the uh, associated uh, uh, properties to these uh, ones, uh, but in particular, LT appears to be a possibly continuous. Uh, and okay. So uh, this is just some technical uh, uh, features. So in this uh, context of a, a very general financial model, we call that a portfolio process, as I as explained before, it just an adaptive process uh, 
which satisfies this dynamics. Because, as I told you, you can uh, transform the last position vt minus 1 at time t minus 1 into vt plus vt minus 1 minus vt. So that you require that this position uh, is solvent for equivalent trees, and the equation value is, uh, is positive. Associated to this uh, uh, structure appear uh, uh, random partial order uh, appears precisely. If you consider two random variables, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2, uh, vector valued random variables, because we consider portfolio processes expressed in physical units, that is the uh, number of risk cases, then uh, we said that gamma 1 is greater than gamma 2 at time t, that means with respect to the random order generated by the solvency set gt, if and when if this reaction holds. This is an important remark for, for later. So, uh, let us uh, 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 see an example. This is a two-dimensional uh, model defined by BDASC uh, spread as well as a fixed uh, transaction cost. We suppose that the first uh, position of uh, 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 portfolio uh, positions uh, corresponds to a cash account with numeraire uh, uh, equals uh, 1. And uh, the risky, uh, the second uh, position, risky asset, is modeled by a BDASC spread SBSF. This means that when you uh, sell one unit of this risky asset, you get the price uh, SB. While if you want to buy one, uh, one unit of this uh, risky asset, you ha you have to uh, to. Uh, uh, to, buy, to buy this price uh, S uh, uh, A. Okay, it is very uh, classical. At last, we uh, suppose that the, uh, uh, there are fixed transaction costs uh, when uh, at each time you uh, uh, buy or sell uh, some units of risky assets. Moreover, when the number of risky assets is positive, we suppose that the agent is rational enough not to uh, deliberately, deliberately uh, sell uh, the stock when uh, the total amount of uh, cash you can get by selling your risky position is such that uh, this amount of money, that is precisely this is the amount of money you get when uh, uh, selling the positive one number of risky assets at this price, but you have, you have to pay the fixed cost CT. So if this number is negative, it's not interesting for you to, to, uh, to liquidate. You prefer either to wait for a better time or throw away this position. Okay? So we suppose that in this case, uh, uh, in this case, the agent, in the worst case, uh, uh, preferred to swap away this uh, 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 risky uh, position so that we can characterize the so This, uh, this okay. is not obvious uh, to say that the agent is rational uh, enough because it may happen that uh, the next day uh, the uh, liquidate position is even more expensive. Uh, in the case, uh, that depends uh, if uh, indeed uh, the price uh, uh, will be uh, lower and lower, for instance. But in the case, you have, in this case, uh, I the cost also may increase. Oh, the fixed cost. But in any case, uh, 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 this is a model, an assumption. In the case where, of course, Y is positive. Because, of course, if Y is negative, you do not have any choice than uh, uh, buying risky assets to cancel your short position, of course. My reservation is not to say that it is a rational behavior. It's uh, better to skip this. Mm, okay. So, uh, let us characterize the set of all uh, solvent points x, y, uh, that is belongs to gt, where X is the number of, uh, this is the amount of cash, and Y is the number of risky assets. In the first case, uh, when Y is positive, you precisely get this uh, 
uh, uh, liquidation value, that is the cash, plus the amount of money you get when selling white risky assets at this price SB, minus the fixed cost. So, this means that this one is positive, in, in particular the case, because of my assumption, that this amount is positive. Otherwise, X is positive, just that, because you uh, prefer to give up your risky uh, position. In the second case, when Y is strictly negative and you want to, uh, to, uh, to cancel your short position, you need to, to buy uh, minus Y uh, units, units of risky assets. So you pay the, uh, the opposite of this uh, uh, quantity, okay? because this quantity is negative here, and you also pay the fixed cost. For that, uh, the position is solvent if and only if you have this relation. Finally, uh, the associated uh, uh, pre-order the following. The position Z is greater than the position Z prime, or equivalently, the difference Z minus Z prime belongs to GT if and only if you have these relations. So it is more complicated than in the usual uh, uh, models with proportional transition cost, okay? where uh, 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 there is uh, uh, some linearity. So let us uh, here see uh, uh, the solvency uh, set, the random solvency set, that is this uh, hatching uh, area. Uh, as you can see, if you suppose that uh, the fixed cost equals uh, zero, CT equals zero, then you get the uh, solvency cone of the uh, uh, Kibanov uh, model. Okay, so just uh, 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 consider the, the cone here by the pushing C to, uh, to zero. Okay, to set these two lines. And uh, Actually, because this solvency set is, uh, is not convex, it's not a cone in particular, then uh, uh, new uh, problems uh, uh, arise for these uh, models. We need recall that for the frictionless models, but also for the Kabanov model, uh, the, uh, we use uh, the usual duality principle, principle uh, to characterize the set of all prices replicating or super replicating a given claim. This is very standard uh, for frictionless models. You know that the, uh, the, the fundamental object is the uh, risk uh, neutral probability measure. Then you can deduce uh, the set of all uh, super hedging prices for any complete models or the, the unique price in the case of a complete model. And in the case of the Kavanov model, there is an analogous uh, concept we call consistent price system that is a martingale evolving in the uh, positive dual of the uh, uh, solvency cone. Okay, in a multivaried uh, 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 setting, so that from this uh, consistent price systems, you can also give a dual characterization of all prices superimplicating a European claim or an American claim. This is very uh, well known. For this model, of course, uh, uh, duality principle based on the uh, Hanbanar uh, separation theorem is not appropriate. Okay, because the set of all uh, uh, yes, the set of all terminal values of terminal portfolio uh, processes is not a priori convex. So we cannot exhibit these fundamental concepts that uh, uh, risk neutral probabilities or consistent price systems are. Okay, but uh, the, the goal uh, is, in any case, to, to, to find uh, uh, an alternative approach to, to try to, 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 to get such a characterization of uh, super replicating prices. So, uh, recall uh, our model, 
And so our goal is to, to, uh, to find portfolio processes V, uh, such that the terminal value Vt is greater than uh, a given payoff Ht with respect to the instrument C set Gt. Here, in our models, H capital T is a payoff expressed in physical units. So that this relation means that you can transform this position into the payoff, actually paying some uh, transaction cost when liquidating uh, the remaining part, Vt minus Ht. So this is a generalization of the well-known definition for frictionless models where uh, the processes are on the real value. Okay? So to uh, be able to, to, to characterize these prices, as in the classical models, we introduce, we uh, work under an equilibrium, under a market equilibrium. Precisely, we consider the following absence of arbitrage uh, opportunity of the second kind. This concept, this uh, definition of arbitrage opportunity of the second kind, was initially uh, introduced by Razoni um, Mikloch uh, for the Kamenov uh, model, actually. Uh, there is no such uh, uh, consideration for the frictionless models because uh, actually for frictionless models such arbitrage opportunity of second kind uh, cannot appear. Okay? But uh, there, there are uh, some counter examples for the kind of model uh, under, uh, for which even if there is no usual absence of arbitrage opportunities, we can exhibit such new arbitrage opportunities. Precisely, we consider the set of all essentially bonded terminal values of portfolio processes starting from a zero initial endowment at time t. This is this set indeed, since uh, uh, the terminal value V capital T can be rewritten as Vt minus Vt minus 1 plus Vt minus 1 minus Vt minus 2, etc., etc., etc to Vt plus 1 minus Vt plus the zero initial endowment, okay? And we require that this uh, difference belongs to minus uh, Gt, okay? Because we require that Vt minus 1 greater than Vt with respect to this uh, random code, the uh, set, etc., etc. This is why uh, we have this uh, uh, simple characterization of all the terminal values of portfolio processes. So, we say uh, that the market defined by the solvency set G satisfies this uh, NX2 condition, that is absence of arbitrage opportunities of the second kind, if we have this property, that is, uh, if the uh, terminal value of a portfolio process starting from this initial endowment uh, 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 is solvent at time capital T, okay, that is belongs to GT, then automatically uh, the initial endowment is also solvent. Okay, so uh, I think like, uh, this, is this is the initial endowment, uh, this is just a notation. In principle, it is not very logical here to say that the T minus, huh? because it is so just a conventional notation. Uh, actually, uh, that, that means that at time t, uh, at time t, you have this initial endowment, and then at time t, you can uh, 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 start to balance your portfolio according to gt, so that you you had uh, maybe uh, v, uh, what I call vt minus vt minus one, that is uh, uh, in minus gt. Okay, and then you can uh, pursue at time t plus 1, etc. Et this is a usual definition. And then we can actually uh, give uh, a characterization of absence of arbitrage opportunities of the second kind, and we get actually, in particular, an equivalent condition which is the same than the one that we get for the Kabanov model. That is, this famous uh, uh, 
condition Mn2 uh, is equivalent to L0 of I need to precise what is this set uh, it's included in uh, L0 of Gt Ft here this set is a set of all Ft measurable vector value on variables uh, whose uh, values uh, belong to the random set Gt plus 1 ok? so the measurability is indicated here this is the similar set, that is a set of all Ft measurable random variables whose values belong to Gt ok? actually uh, I can show you just uh, this implication because this is very uh, uh, simple to understand why N2 implies this Indeed, consider consider uh, gamma uh, t uh, in L0 of gt plus 1 ft this means this is a ft measurable random variable such that gamma t belongs most surely to this random uh, cone ok and then just write minus uh, um, uh, just write gamma t minus gamma t equals zero. Okay. Consider this as an initial endowment. Initial endowment. That is something which is a time TFT measurable. This uh, minus gamma t on the variable <coughs> belongs to minus GT plus one. Okay. So actually if necessary, you trunk this random variable by uh, supposing, by working on the set gamma t uh, less than some n, arbitrary n, so that you get some uh, exosocial bounded random variables. And then observe the definition. You get. So you continue to understand uh, gamma t minus gamma t. The same one. Okay, so you can consider th this uh, term. La, as an element of gamma t, indicator function of gamma t less than n, plus an element which belongs to minus gt plus 1. Precisely, uh, look, have a look at this definition. This is uh, definitely uh, an element of R uh, t, uh, capital T, of course. Okay. Uh, 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 recall that uh, 0 belongs to uh, the solvency set. So maybe you can put here small t plus one if you want, but it's something very important. So that this term belongs to this set, but also to L0 of G capital T uh, F uh, uh, T, since zero belongs to G capital T. So under uh, N A2, you deduce that gamma T indicator function of gamma T less than one belongs to uh, gt so now make n converge to infinity and then you get that gamma t belongs to gt is so exactly what we want to show ok? so this is uh, a good uh, symbol so uh, an interesting question about uh, because I took uh, in the beginning of my presentation about uh, geometrical aspects so, uh, the first question is to understand what is exactly uh, this set. This is, as a point of view, uh, 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 the set of called selectors, I mean random variables, which are Ft measurable and whose values belong to the random set Gt plus 1. But Gt plus 1 is a Ft measurable random set. I need to precise what is a, a random set. Actually, we said that GT is, for instance, FT measurable. This is an abuse of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, to say, vocabulary. Uh, in the sense that it is said measurable, in the sense, in the sense that the graph of GT that is a set of all omega x uh, such that x belongs to gt uh, of uh, omega belongs to the product uh, sigma algebra uh, uh, ft 
times the Borel sigma algebra on RD. Okay, this is the definition. So here you have really uh, Ft plus one uh, uh, random set, while the, cons the selectors I consider are Ft majority one. So it is very natural to understand whether actually uh, when uh, there is uh, Ft measurable random uh, set uh, corresponding to the values of these sectors. Okay, so this is uh, my, my first uh, uh, problem to to see to understand this uh, this set. I introduce. Uh, 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 different uh, uh, definitions and concepts so that I can give you uh, a precise uh, 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 characterization of this set. I said the definition uh, a set uh, gamma <coughs> included in uh, L0 of uh, uh, Rd uh, F uh, T is said uh, decomposable decomposable if uh, uh, for all uh, uh, event A in the sigma algebra and all gamma 1, gamma 2 in uh, gamma gamma 1 indicator of a plus gamma 2 indicator of the complement belongs to gamma. That is, gamma is stable and the partition, uh, finite uh, 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 partition. We have uh, this theorem. Let gamma be a closed uh, subset of L0 uh, to Rd, but actually I, I can also consider more general sets like uh, Polish uh, uh, spaces. Uh, uh, so say P, a priori, LP, where uh, P uh, belongs to one infinity, okay, for the moment P belongs to one infinity, then there is a nice sorem in Yuri's book. It's as if you can have a look uh, in the appendix, uh, saying that uh, gamma uh, can, uh, is uh, of the form Lp of xf, that is the set of all f measurable random variables whose values belong to x, x being uh, f uh, measurable uh, set. Uh, that is, so that the graph is measurable with respect to f times b of Rd, okay? If and only if, if and only if, uh, gamma is decomposable. Okay? So it's a nice result. It appears, as mentioned by uh, Yuri, that uh, uh, we can, this theorem, this theorem also holds for p equals zero. Actually, this is a, an easy exercise. If you are interested in, have a look at the proof uh, in your book and then adapt the proof. There is a comment that uh, does work also for p equal to zero. Yes, yes. Actually, you can just adapt the proof uh, because in the proof we use a uh, distance, which is the usual one, okay, and then replace this by the usual one on L zero, okay. So uh, expectation of uh, norm of x minus one into one, okay, and then the, the proof is the same. So, okay, so so that you, uh, you consider uh, uh, metric, uh, the topology on L zero for the good for, for the convergence in probability. So this is usual. A consequence of this uh, uh, nice result is that it appears that on consequence consequence uh, 
observe that L0 of uh, G T plus 1 Ft is indeed closed. Why? To consider a sequence uh, of random variables uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in G T plus 1 and the Shuri, so that gamma n uh, converge to uh, gamma infinity in probability, so that also converge uh, most surely for a subsequence. Since GT plus 1 is closed, okay, this implies that uh, uh, gamma infinity also belongs to GT plus 1 and most surely. So this is a closed set. Moreover, it is uh, obvious that such a set is decomposable. Because just check, uh, uh, just, just, just uh, check that if gamma 1, gamma 2 belongs to this set, okay, then uh, of course you work with this uh, uh, sigma j1 because they are ft measurable. So consider such combination where uh, then it's obvious that uh, this new variable belongs to GT plus 1 because it suffices to check on each element of the partition. Yes? So this is obvious. The conclusion is that you can rewrite L0 of GT plus 1 FT in this form. L0 of some GT, GT T, FT, okay? Where a GT is an FT a measurable a random set. G T T F T uh, measurable. Now we want to to to, to characterize uh, uh, G T T. Okay. So the first thing we can say, uh, once again using uh, 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 the, this uh, theorem, as it is a proof of this theorem, we can say uh, that uh, G T omega uh, has admits this following form. That is, this is uh, the closure of the countable family of selectors gamma i, so family, okay, a countable family, say 1 to, to infinity, where uh, gamma i uh, belongs to the uh, to this uh, decomposable and closed set. So this is belongs to L0 of GT plus 1 FT. Okay? Uh, just have a look on the, in the, in the, uh, 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 I get to see the custom uh, representation. So, because of this, custom representation. From there, you easily deduce that GT of omega is included. Uh, recall that these uh, random variables take their values in this set, which is closed. So you have this first inclusion. Okay? I do not want to pose equality. Okay? Clearly not. Because this is a FT measurable of one set, this one is FT measurable. Okay? But for the moment we have this. Okay? So now, second step. Second step, uh, I need to introduce uh, a similarly new concept. So, uh, new concept. So, uh, given a so, uh, uh, proposition, uh, let uh, G uh, be uh, F uh, uh, measurable uh, random set. Okay, so we put this space uh, in RD, okay, uh, and uh, H uh, uh, sub sigma algebra, sub sigma algebra. 
an offer of f. I claim that there exists a larger set, afterwards I'm going to uh, precise the sense of this uh, uh, definition, uh, which is, uh, I call, uh, the conditional uh, minimum of G knowing H, okay? uh, which is H uh, uh, measurable, and such that uh, M of G knowing H is increasing emotionally uh, in, in G. Mm -hmm. I can show you the, the proof of this um, uh, without how much time they have. Much time? Okay. Enough. Enough? It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, the proof. I consider the set uh, capital A of all uh, random set A, which are H uh, measurable, and such uh, that A uh, is included in, uh, in J uh, emotionally. Observe that uh, the empty set. Uh, Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Observe that the empty set belongs to this, uh, to this, to this family. Mm -hmm. So, for every uh, uh, A, capital A, I, I introduce uh, zeta A, which is just uh, uh, the indicator of uh, this uh, function uh, defined on the product. So zeta a of a is just a little function of the graph, and that is uh, this one, or equivalently, uh, the indicator function of the graph, and which is, uh, by definition, uh, uh, measurable with respect to the product, sorry, with respect to uh, h uh, times uh, b of uh, uh, R by definition because A is a H measurable from the set. Then I define zeta the uh, uh, essential uh, supremum, the essential uh, supremum of zeta R over all A in capital A. Okay? Uh, maybe I need to recall what is the essential supremum. It's okay for both uh, of you? Yes? So, uh, okay. Uh, so this is a random variable that is belongs to H. Okay. So we can easily notice that if A B uh, belongs to A, then the union also belongs to A. So the union of two uh, random sets also on the set. So that gets that zeta A sub zeta A less B sorry less than uh, zeta the union. This means that actually the family uh, Z, zeta A is what we say uh, directed, directed uh, upward. Mm -hmm. So that uh, uh, we can uh, extract uh, uh, from this uh, non necessarily computable family, we can extract a computable uh, increasing family so that the essential supremum is just the increasing limit of this uh, subfamily. Okay? Where uh, AN belongs to, to A. Of course, zeta belongs to zero uh, vertex, uh, only two values, uh, zero or one, and precisely, we get that zeta equals one, it's just the uh, uh, union, okay, of the whole n of uh, this set. Uh, to be more precise, I prefer to write this like that, the whole x, so that 
the top mega x because I am interested uh, by the sections to define my random uh, set uh, corresponds to the union of all n of n of omega. Okay? Uh, now, if I consider any uh, random set in the family A, you have by definition zeta A almost surely on the product uh, less than uh, zeta by definition. This means that actually uh, uh, zeta A is less than zeta except uh, on a negligible set n of the product, that is some points omega x on the product. Okay? So, uh, uh, in particular, uh, except for these points, uh, we have, uh, because uh, zeta a is an uh, indicator function of the graph of a, except this point, we have something like that, a of omega, is included in uh, 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 zeta equal one. Okay, this is the, the idea. So this is why I call uh, uh, this uh, set the largest one. That is the conditional uh, minimum of uh, G knowing H. So now we can yes. Yes, exactly. You can have different versions, but we have we have the opportunity to talk about this now. Because the consequence about uh, GT, the uh, we call that our problem is to characterize uh, this set. We have written it like uh, this. Um, okay? And for the moment we know that uh, G uh, tilde T uh, is included in uh, GT uh, plus one. Uh, yes. So uh, this we can apply uh, this and set the flowing. GT is for almost all the points uh, included in the uh, uh, conditional minimum of gt plus 1 knowing ft, but maybe some uh, 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 points, uh, uh, maybe I cannot uh, uh, check that some points of this belong to this one because of this negligible set, right? But I know that in any case, for these points, they are in uh, gt plus 1. So I can add just uh, the points x such that because okay I can I add the points x such that omega x belongs to M where L is the individual set for the product. Okay? And this is the omega section. And then intersected with GT plus one because I know that all the points here are in GT plus one. So this is a new version. No, another version, another version of the conditional minimum of Ft. Okay? So now we can uh, uh, say finally that we have this uh, included in this new version uh, with the same name. Okay? This is the first uh, uh, step, but we have already finished, uh, almost finished, because on the other hand, on the other hand, as the uh, conditional minimum of GT plus 1 known FT by definition is contained in the GT plus 1, okay, you have the following inclusions. And they were uh, the set of all selectors, FT measurable selectors of this random set, that is what I call, uh, what I write like this, set of all FT measurable selectors of this random set, 
because of this, are included in L0 of GT plus 1 Ft. Okay? But this set is just L0 of GT Tft. And now we are in presence of two Ft, two measurable Ft measurable sets. This is very important. Measurable sets. Okay? Because both of them are empty measurable, I can deduce, I can deduce that M of GT plus 1 knowing FT is also almost surely included in this one. Actually, this uh, uh, reasoning is based on the famous uh, uh, measurable selection SOM. Can also find in the in this book, and uh, the, the 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 reasoning is following: say that suppose that on, in the con, on the contrary case that uh, there is a non set of t non set so that this one is not included in this one. Then omega by omega, you can find some points which belong to this set but not this one. And after this famous uh, uh, selection measurable uh, SOM. Uh, allows you to find a measurable version of such points. That is, you, you find, uh, finally, a selector which is FT measurable and belongs to this set, but does not belong uh, to this set or another set, and which is in contradiction with this inclusion. It is the idea. Okay? So, uh, therefore, we have proved actually that GTT equals the minimum conditional uh, uh, of GT plus 1 uh, knowing FT. And so we have here a new interpretation of this famous uh, condition in particular for the PDF model. That is, this is equivalent to say, uh, 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 if you have a look at this uh, condition 2, Okay, now we place GT plus 1 uh, by first uh, GTT and then this. Yes? And so you get this. That is the minimum, minimal conditional, uh, the conditional minimum, sorry, conditional minimum of GT plus 1 knowing FT is included in, uh, in the GT, yes, in GT, I'm not sure. And uh, we can see, actually, uh, we can have a better view of this uh, uh, concept uh, in the case, in the case, example, in the case where omega is finite, is finite. Suppose that uh, omega is represented by a binomial tree, represented by a binomial uh, tree that is a time t. Uh, consider a node, omega t, and then the successors. Okay? Successors at time t plus 1. Successor of uh, uh, omega uh, t. Okay? Then, what uh, are we looking uh, for? The, the largest. Uh, uh, okay, let's understand. <laughs> Okay. The largest uh, uh, subset uh, uh, included in, uh, in GT plus 1. That is, we have this included in GT plus 1, but this one is FT measurable, that is constant on each uh, node, omega t, whatever the different values. Okay, that makes any sense. So, for instance, this. Okay? And then it, should, it, it must be included in this uh, set, whatever omega t plus 1 uh, at time t plus 1, because the, that corresponds to the uh, successors. So, whatever, this means that we include in the intersection. Okay? Successor of omega t. And three, you are looking for the largest one. So, the largest one is obviously this one. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, simple idea. Okay, so we have here a simple uh, uh, view 
of this conditional uh, uh, minimum. Okay, so uh, after this, uh, uh, this, this demonstration, let us uh, uh, go on. Uh, I want to characterize the set of all prices supraging mechanically. I need another concept. Uh, the concept we have introduced uh, with uh, Yuri for uh, the, uh, the, the models with uh, proportional transition costs. Recall that uh, I, I worked with this concept of uh, essential supremum for real value on variables. We generalize this concept to, to vector valued random variables uh, with respect to a random uh, pre order. Precisely. I consider a probability space uh, omega, H sub sigma algebra of capital F, and we uh, consider on the set of all vector valued random variables. Uh, uh, random pre-orders, for instance, gamma 2 is greater than gamma 1, if an unique expression holds. We easily uh, uh, show that this is uh, uh, pre-order because of the properties satisfied by, uh, by uh, gamma L, for instance. Okay. In the uh, case of Cabanos uh, models, the uh, this uh, random pre-order is actually characterized by uh, what we call a uh, multi-utility representation. This is uh, well known by economists in general. Uh, so, here is the definition. Consider a family of uh, uh, vector valued f measurable on the variables. We define a conditional essential supremum that is Essential supremum, which is H measurable, it satisfies the following properties. The first, the, second, the, the two first conditions are very usual. That is, uh, uh, the essential supremum is greater than the family you consider, as in the real case. This is uh, here's the notation that is actually any elements of the essential supremum is greater than the family, we want to characterize the essential supremum. Second property, if a random variable, which is H measurable, dominates the family, then you can reduce it into an element of the H essential supremum. But contrary to the real case, here the uh, preorder is not necessarily total. Okay? So this is why you cannot expect that the essential supremum is a single term. You have a, a large family of uh, actually minimal random variables dominating the family gamma. But as they are minimal, such elements are incomparable as soon as they are distinct. This is the last uh, property. Okay? So this is very uh, natural. Actually, the very question is whether a given subset gamma admits a non uh, non-empty, sorry, non-empty uh, essential supremum. Of course, as the essential supremum uh, must dominate the family, it's necessary for uh, gamma to be dominated by here the H measurable and variable. Uh, for the Kamenov uh, 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 model, we only require that the uh, order intervals be almost really compact. Okay? For that, we can use some uh, 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 expected utility minimization uh, uh, arguments, uh, very usual. By extracting some subsequence, you can minimize. That is, you consider an element which dominates the family. And then you want to, to, uh, to lower this element as much as possible with respect to the different utility functions defining your partial order. This is the idea. Here, this is the same idea when we consider this uh, specific uh, uh, random preorder, which a priori is not uh, characterized by 
at least to contable family objective functions. I don't know. So I need to use another uh, appro approach. But in any case, under some technical condition I call Excel world, is a condition which holds for classical financial models, even for instance for the one I presented before. And this technical condition, I can formulate an existence theorem that is provided that the order intervals are almost fully compact, then any family of vector value random variables which are bounded from below by the edge measurable random variable admits an empty essential supremum. Okay? So this is very nice. So from there, we are able to characterize the set of all supergene traces so a given payoff, edge. To do so, we first seek for a subclass of super replicating portfolio process for a given payoff. We call minimum the following sense. That is, first there are minimal, minimum in the classical sense with respect to the solvency set GT, because if such a minimal portfolio is greater than another one, then they are equal. Okay, here, uh, recall that V hat T is greater than V T with respect to T, this means that with respect to GT. Mm -hmm. And then I say that if this one is minimum, minimum, then necessarily V hat T is equal to V T. Observe that in general, uh, it is interesting to seek for minimum uh, portfolio process because what this relation means. This means that you can transform V hat T into V T paying some transient cost. So, in some sense, this one is cheaper than this one. Okay? On the other hand, we also introduce another set which is larger. That is a set of all portfolio processes new T mean, which this time are minimum, minimal with respect to GT plus one. Okay, it's the same thing, but uh, uh, when I write this, this means that this one is cheaper than V hat T, but only at the next instant. But actually, under NA2, this is the condition we, we, we consider, this relation is also equivalent to this one, GT intersected with GT plus one GT. Why? Because the difference is FT measurable, and belongs to GT plus one. And the NA2 condition is precisely L0 of GT plus one FT belongs included in GT FT, that is every FT measurable on the variable which belongs to GT plus one belongs to GT. And here you have this configuration. Okay? So this relation in her case means that this uh, means that VT is not only cheaper at time T, but also at time T plus 1. Okay? Because if you transform, you can transform V hat T into VT at time T by transition cost, but also at time T plus 1. Okay. So, uh, before uh, 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 presenting our main, uh, my, my main result, I like to say that without transition cost, uh, minimal super replicating portfolio prices are also considered for European or American plans. And this is, in particular, uh, the, we, we can show that there exists a minim, uh, minimum, a minimal price, and this is based, we, for this, we use the famous concept of essential supremum, and the, the Snell envelope for uh, American options, if you remember. So, this is very related but in a multidimensional uh, setting. So, uh, proposition. We suppose that uh, uh, the NA2 condition holds. Suppose that there exists at least one super replicating portfolio of the European claim H capital T. Okay. Then we can show that there exists indeed minimal uh, elements, uh, portfolio uh, processes, uh, which are minimal with respect to GT, but also some uh, um, portfolio process which are minimal with respect to GT plus one. Precisely, this larger set is entirely uh, 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 characterized by this following set of 
uh, the backward inclusions. Precisely, to get a minimal portfolio process with respect to GT plus one, just uh, consider V capital T determined value as the payoff, it's very natural, and then from uh, uh, inductively, when you have concentrated VT plus one, then uh, consider any selector of this family, that is a FT measurable random variable uh, in the essential supremum, uh, when uh, considering the random partial order with respect to GT plus one. Okay? Uh, what is interesting is that we have an entire, uh, uh, we have a constructive approach of this uh, uh, backward inclusions because we solve uh, a kind of uh, uh, expected utility uh, minimization problem. Okay? This is the idea, actually, uh, just uh, using the liquidation value process. And once you have uh, characterized all these minimal portfolio processes, then you get all the initial prices. Why? Because if you consider any portfolio process such as VT is greater than H capital T, okay, super rating portfolio, then you know that you can reduce VT into <coughs> me, a minimal a minimal one. Okay? So actually not only at IT, at every time. So that this means that every initial value uh, super replicating the payoff is just an element of uh, G0 at time zero plus the initial value of a minimal minimal portfolio process. So at time zero the code the solvency set G0 is known. You can compute this and then you get all the prices. This is the idea. Um, maybe I have to, sometimes to, to pursue, I can, I can uh, go on, yes, it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, maybe I can show you the, the idea of the proof of this uh, theorem. Yes. Uh, okay. So, I want to characterize first this set new mean uh, H. So, as I told you, just uh, set V capital T equals uh, HT, okay, at time T. And now I want to construct a V T minus 1. By assumption, by assumption, there exists a portfolio process V0 in new H. New H is a set of all portfolio processes super replicating H. Such that uh, V0 uh, capital T is greater than the payoff HT uh, with respect to G capital T. But this is a portfolio process, so it satisfies the following uh, dynamic uh, belongs to uh, GT by assumption. But this is the definition. So that you have this uh, greater than GT than V0 T, but is greater than uh, uh, V uh, T equals HT. Okay? This means that the random variable HT is bounded from above by an FT minus one measurable random variable with respect to this random preorder GT. So by the theorem, the existence theorem I uh, presented before, I deduce that the FT minus one essential uh, supremum of this uh, family HT, actually a singleton, with respect to the solvency set GT, okay, is different from the empty set. So that, not only it is not empty, but any uh, uh, random variable which dominates this family can be reduced into an element of this essential supremum. So, 
uh, there exists v t minus 1 in f t minus 1 g t essential supremum of h t such that uh, I can reduce v0 t minus 1 with respect to g capital t into uh, v t uh, minus 1. Okay? Uh, and from there, and uh, NL2, the difference is Ft minus 1 measurable, but belongs to Gt. So it belongs to Gt minus 1. Also. So you have uh, uh, this inequality. And then you can repeat, repeat uh, the procedure. So that you get at least one element of this uh, uh, sequence of particular uh, uh, inclusions. This is the first thing. Okay. Uh, second step. Uh, we need to show that these uh, elements are minimal with respect to GT plus 1. So consider such an element, V, satisfying uh, this, uh, this inclusion and consider V greater uh, than uh, W. W is super duplicating uh, price, but uh, with respect to GT plus 1 at in, for any T. Actually, it is relevant to say that this one is uh, cheaper than this one, but only at the next instant, but also at time T because of the T condition. This is I already mentioned. Okay, and then, so you have Vt equals Ht by definition. Okay, it is greater with respect to Gt than uh, Wt, which is uh, greater than Ht. But here you have the equality, so it's clear that at time capital T, you have V capital T equals W capital T. At, this, at time T minus 1, you have uh, v uh, t minus 1 greater than w uh, t minus 1, this is my assumption. But uh, using the, the first uh, uh, part of the proof, you can construct a minimal uh, portfolio, uh, you can construct the portfolio that assign this uh, inclusion with respect to w. Okay, that is because just the t minus one is greater than the two. This is still what we need here. So that you can find here some vt t minus one with respect to vt, where vt minus one belongs to the same f t minus one, the gt essential supremum of h capital t. Okay, so now here you are in presence of two elements of the set essential supremum. And so because they are comparable, necessarily they are uh, equal, etc. So you can by this way uh, pursue uh, the reasoning. Okay? So the next step uh, actually on this theorem uh, is to show uh, that uh, uh, the uh, new mean is different from uh, uh, the empty set, that is, there are also the old elements with respect to GT. So, recall that uh, new mean has the portfolio processes which are minimal, not, not with respect to GT plus 1, but with uh, 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 GT. Okay? So, uh, the proof is, uh, is rather similar, actually. Uh, we uh, endo window uh, new H with uh, the preorder uh, the preorder uh, V1 greater than V2 if and only if V1 T is greater than G V2 T with respect to GT okay or T and we just have to show that uh, uh, new H is an inductive inductive set uh, that is every chain uh, uh, I, I dare say lower 
additive set, I mean that each chain admits a lower bond. A chain is yeah. just a set uh, which is totally uh, ordered. Okay? So that, uh, if I can show that, it uh, uh, implies that uh, uh, lemma zone applies, and I conclude that uh, there, there was some minimal, minimal limits. It's obvious that uh, this is uh, in the No, this is also obvious, actually. All right. So, uh, to do so, consider a chain. Consider a chain uh, uh, C, included in the image. Okay? So, this means that all the elements of this uh, chain are comparable. I can say with a such a V1 is greater than V2, or simply V2 is uh, greater than V1. So uh, I, I introduce the following uh, candidate for being the lower bound, because I want minimal elements. So V star T equals the essential uh, FT measurable with respect to the pre-order GT essential of uh, this uh, uh, this chain, okay? Actually, generally, the essential minimum is the uh, symmetric uh, concept of essential supremum, of course. Okay? Generally, this essential minimum is a family, but here all the elements are comparable, so we can show actually that this one is just a single term, okay? And then you get that. Uh, uh, this one can be written as a decreasing limit with respect to the uh, GT order of some uh, uh, elements of Cm. But actually, be careful. Here there was a mistake. Either the Ct, okay? Ct is a set of all Vt where V belongs to C. Mm -hmm. This is a consequence of uh, the assumption that C is K, yeah? Yes, sure. And here I need to write to things like that, a priori, that is, a priori, the sequence depends on t, but a priori, because uh, uh, for every uh, j, for every j, uh, what can I say? For every j, uh, v uh, n uh, j of uh, uh, zero. Zero, zero, V and G, J of capital T are comparable. Are comparable because they are elements of the chain. So there exists a minimal, a minimal a, a smallest element, I can say, the smallest element. Okay? Maybe uh, uh, so, uh, I can write it V. Uh, n g, this is some v n j, sorry, j of u. I don't know which of them, but there is one of them. And so that is less than uh, v of n j t, whatever t. Mm -hmm. So that is present here for each, uh, at each time, actually, with respect, of course, to, 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 to j, to, uh, to g, as I see. So that, uh, uh, replace, replace uh, uh, at uh, each uh, t n j of uh, t by n j. That is replaced by the smallest statement. We get a new sequence, of course, but what we can say is that v star t, because this is the essential supremum, it is less than with respect to t to uh, less than every element of the chain. In particular, less than this v and j. Right? And this one, by construction, is less than v and j of t. But this sequence converges to the star t. So we can 
actually, even if this is a uh, uh, vector valued uh, order, we can uh, deduce, I can explain you why, we deduce that also v, v and g, uh, g sorry, <laughs> t uh, also converge. Uh, actually, I need to precise here this is uh, almost surely convergence. Uh, almost surely converge to v uh, star t. Actually, there is a general result. Consider c less than g, less than alpha n, less than beta n. j is a uh, proper cone, g proper cone. And we suppose that the ordered intervals are compact. Okay? Then, uh, uh, because of this, you know that for, uh, uh, suppose, suppose, suppose that uh, alpha n uh, does not converge to, uh, sorry, yes, alpha n does not converge to C for a subsequence. Because, you see, uh, by a compactness argument, because you suppose that the order of intervals are compact, and the, actually this is less than 1, because I need to precise here that uh, beta n is decreasing to uh, so C. Okay, this is exactly what we have here. Then, if alpha n uh, doesn't converge to C, then actually alpha n converge to something else, which, different, which is different from C, at least for a subsequence by compactness arguments. So that, what do you get? You get this inequality, alpha infinity, less than uh, C. Now, because, actually, because just because it's a partial order, deduce that this is a partial. Okay? Uh, yes, so I can uh, maybe uh, just have a conclusion about what I, uh, I am doing. Uh, from there, you finally uh, deduce that V star T is a decreasing limit of V and J T for every T. And since delta V and J T belongs to minus G T, so definition, uh, delta means uh, V T minus V T minus 1, okay? On the end, you have this super replicating property, then you can pass to the limit and then deduce that V star is also a portfolio process that is belongs to a new, uh, new edge. And then you deduce that uh, by Zorn lemma that there are uh, minimal elements. Okay? This is the idea. So, as I told you, the consequence is that from this uh, uh, sequence of uh, uh, backward inclusions, you can recover all the super edging prices of a given claim. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's okay for today. I have many things to, to, to tell you, of course. <laughs> That's <all>. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Thank you so much. Any questions?